Hello everybody and welcome back to another video in the bootleg office saga. We're doing another one today and I'm really excited about this one because we're going to finally be verifying the origin of the two product keys in the two bootleg office copies. Now if you missed the two videos I'll give you a brief recap here but if you want to see the full episodes I'll have them up in the cards. But essentially what we did is we took a look at two separate copies of Microsoft Office 2010 that turned out to be bootlegs. The first one was actually sent to me by a viewer, and the second one in the video that's playing on screen right now that I published a couple of days ago is a copy that I purchased myself on eBay that was advertised as a genuine copy of Microsoft Office Professional 2010. And I purchased it with the intention of comparing it to the bootleg copy in the first video. But all sorts of weird stuff went on. The copy took about two months to get here. There were some shipping problems uh, the seller wouldn't communicate with me and I kind of go over that more in the full episode but uh, long story short it turned out to be another bootleg and we explored it in that video and kind of dived into this scam that's currently going on on eBay a little bit more but today as I said we're gonna be actually verifying the origin of these product keys and seeing uh, in the case of the first product key if it's even a real key because if you saw that video you'll know that when we tried to type in the key into the copy of office on the disk it wasn't able to verify it now there's two explanations for this it could be that the key is just fake or it could be that it's a real key but it's only intended for the professional version of office and not standard which was on the cd even though the cd said professional on it before we dive into that though i want to talk about some of the theories that uh we all i mean well me and you guys in the comments collectively have regarding the origin of these keys now the first one which i saw a couple of times and is one that i uh, thought of before i even started recording the videos is that these are ms MSDN keys. Now, MSDN isn't around anymore, but it was a subscription service for developers who create software for Windows. And, you know, Microsoft would provide you with documentation and all sorts of information that would be useful as a software developer. And one of the things they offered to MSDN subscribers were product keys that they could use to test Microsoft software in a development environment. But they were only intended for use by MSDN subscribers for evaluation purposes. The keys themselves are genuine, they will activate software, but you're not supposed to use the keys outside of a development or an evaluation environment, and you're certainly not supposed to sell them to other people. Another explanation is that these keys are volume license keys, and this is actually the case with one of them. Spoiler alert, we'll get into that in a moment. A volume license key, if, if you're not aware, is a key that is for enterprise use, and essentially for large businesses, where where instead of having to buy a ton of copies of Windows or Office that all have different product keys, they can get a volume license key from Microsoft that, you know, obviously costs more money. But the nice thing about it is it's one key that can be used on a certain number of computers. And this is very useful for bootleggers if they're able to get their hands on one of these because they can just use the same key on all of these copies of Office that they sell or Windows or whatever other piece of Microsoft. Microsoft software they might be trying to sell. And this could very well be the case uh, with what we have going on on eBay. All these copies that are currently being sold, they could all have the same key because it is a volume license key. And I'm going to show you how I know that in a moment here. The third explanation, it kind of ties into the previous two, uh, is that the key could be just stolen, which obviously the MSDN keys and volume license keys are technically stolen. Another theory that I personally found pretty interesting is that these keys are from e-waste machines machines. And this was suggested by this commenter right here, and, and essentially what he points out is that these bootleggers could be getting their hands on e-waste machines that have licenses to Windows and Office on them, and then take the product key that is physically attached to the computer with that little sticker that you see on you know OEM computers that you go out and buy from the store, and they could just take that key, write it down, and use that in their bootleg copies. But, like I said, I know for sure that one of these keys is a volume license key, and how I was able to do that was by using a tool called the Ultimate PID Checker, which is on screen right now. Now, this is not a recent tool. This has been around for a while, and it hasn't been updated in many years. You can see it was last updated, at least according to Softpedia here, in January of 2017. So this is not the, the most recent 
tool for doing this, but it will still work just fine for our purposes, uh, especially considering that Office 2010, you know, predates this tool by seven years. So it works just fine. I'll have a download link to this tool if you want to go check it out. It's very useful for verifying the origin of product keys and seeing if a product key that you get uh, with, you know, a copy of Office or Windows is actually a real product key. All you have to do is paste the product key up here or just type it in if you don't have it, you know, copied somewhere else and then select the version of either Windows, Office or even Visual Studio that the key is supposedly for and it will tell you if it's a real product key. So we're going to start out with the second key. We're going to do this because we already know if you saw the video that the key is valid because it was able to activate with Microsoft. I was able to go through the phone activation system and right under addition type you see it says Pro Plus VL for volume license. Description is RTM Pro Plus MAK. And right under key type, it says volume MAK. So volume is obviously a volume license key. MAK is short for multiple activation key. And that just means that the key can be utilized on multiple computers, which is obviously what you would want in a volume license key. But it's one of the, the types of volume license keys that Microsoft offers. This is not what you're supposed to get in a retail copy of Office. In fact, on the packaging itself, on the bootlegs packaging, it says that it's strictly for non-commercial use on up to three PCs. Volume license keys are not for non-commercial use. They're for commercial or organization use. They're not for the average consumer who just goes out to the store and buys Office 2010 or whatever other Microsoft product you go out and buy. So yeah, that's a major red flag. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if all of the copies of Office being sold on those eBay listings use this exact same key. Though it's interesting that some people said that the key didn't work for them and that they you know, left a negative review because of that reason. I don't know, maybe they could be using multiple keys and maybe I just lucked out and got one that worked, but Let's move on to the first key. So we're going to paste that in here. Now, I've not verified this prior to recording, so we're going to see once and for all if this key is a genuine key. And check that out. Wow, it's a retail key, and it is for Office Professional Plus. Well, actually, it probably isn't a retail key for Office Professional Plus because those didn't exist because Office Professional Plus was only available through volume licensing. And that's what I was talking about in the original video when I said that there is a difference between Office Professional and Professional Plus. They are two separate releases and Professional Plus was volume licensing only. That's the only way you could get it. So I tried to use this key in a copy of Office Professional Plus. In fact, and I want to thank all of the people who reached out to me offering to help because I had a ton of you guys reach out and offer to send me a copy of Office Professional, um, point me, you know, where I could go and buy one. If there, I think someone sent me a listing on eBay. I mean, thank you to all of you guys who offered to help out. But I tried just about every copy that I could get my hands on and all of them say the key is invalid. That's This is Office Professional Plus right here, the 32-bit version. I tried the 64-bit version. I had somebody reach out and say they could try it with the academic version, the professional academic release. That one also returned the key as invalid. And for the life of me, I could not track down a professional SKU, a professional copy of Office 2010. Everyone that reached out had either Professional Plus or in the case of the one guy who had the professional academic release. At least nobody had standard professional. That's the copy that showed up time and time again. Even when I thought, oh, this looks like it's professional. I open up the installer, it says professional plus. Every single one of them said professional plus. And according to the PID checker here, this is a professional plus key. But what's interesting is what the EULA line says. It says LTPERP. -E if we look at the other key here, which is your standard volume license key, it says LTMAK, which again is short for multiple activation key, which lines up with what it says here and what it says here. So I had not heard of this before. So I looked it up and I came across this thread on the My Digital Life forums. For this guy, he had a copy of Professional Plus Retail and had the same license channel. And this person responded and said, this program is available only as part of volume licensing agreements, the Microsoft Home and Use program, and some other special licensing programs. The product key comes from an 
MSDN or TechNet subscription, which is not intended for resale. The product key was probably locked by Microsoft. Now this has happened before. Microsoft has blacklisted certain product keys. And honestly, I'm going to say that that's probably what happened with this product key because that makes sense why every copy of Office 2010 that I've tried returns the key as invalid. It has to be blacklisted unless there's some copy out there that is designed to work with this key that I just have not been able to find. But I spent a lot of time uh, searching for this. I had, like I said, all those people reach out to me and every single copy that I came across did not work with the key. So I'm gonna say that this key may have been valid at one point. I don't really know what the, again, professional plus retail does not exist. Maybe the retail is signifying something different. I don't know. But this was probably a key for some copy of Professional Plus, possibly through the Microsoft Developer Network or through TechNet, but was leaked out and given out to a bunch of people and then Microsoft just blacklisted it so you can't use the key anymore. There you go, guys. One out of the two product keys is technically valid, though you're not supposed to use it outside of a development or a evaluation environment. So it is a violation of the end user license agreement. And I was actually able to get a refund from eBay because this technically is a scam. These people were advertising a copy of Office, you know, a retail copy, a genuine copy. And they sent me a bootleg copy that has, it just happens to have a working volume license key, but it's not a uh, not what I ordered. So again, I would uh, highly advise everybody to be on the lookout if you are on eBay looking for Microsoft Office or really just any kind of software in general, particularly Microsoft software. See if there are any listings that have, you know, the exact same image that the listing you found has, because like in the case of this here, that's a huge giveaway that there's obviously some coordinated effort by a group of hackers or just a single hacker to take over eBay accounts that have high feedback and that have been on the platform for a very long time to use that as a way to trick people into into getting scammed. And if you have an eBay account and you want to prevent this from happening to you, as in your account being used to sell bootleg software or just any other thing that you uh, don't put up yourself, make sure you're using a unique password on your account. And that just goes for any online account that you have. The easiest way to do that is with a password manager. Also be sure to enable two-factor authentication, which eBay provides. I would recommend turning that on. It provides an extra layer of security. Yes, it can be a pain having to go get your phone whenever you want to log in because it sends you a text or it sends you a notification to the app. But make sure you're doing it because I guarantee you all these accounts that got hacked did not have two-factor authentication enabled and the password was probably somewhere in some data breach and they just used it again for their eBay accounts. So with all that being said, guys, if you found this video informative or entertaining or perhaps both, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below for new videos coming every single week. Be sure to turn on those channel notifications to make sure you get them as soon as they go live here on the channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.